Welcome to another episode of Mental Health First Aid. We have a great show for you today. Some really interesting people we're going to be talking to. I guess people, not peoples. <laughs> we have one here. Uh, we have one of our consortium members at the Mental Health First Aid at Linden Oaks, and she works in community in schools. Did I say that right? Communities in Communities schools. Communities in schools. This is Denise Ellsbury. And we worked together for quite a while, and uh, she's got a lot of interesting things. As you can see, I didn't know the name of it for sure, so we're going to learn totally about it. That's why I wanted to bring you in to understand what Great. you do. I know you work in the schools, but I'm not sure what you do. Yes. What is Community in Schools? So Communities in Schools is a not-for-profit not organization. Um, it's actually a national organization, so there are Communities in Schools programs all over the country. Um, we just happen to have one here in Aurora. Um, it is the premier dropout prevention organization in the country. So uh, that is our mission is to help kids stay in school and be successful in school and then successful as they move forward so in you life. Work with truancy officers then? Uh, really not so much. We are more focused on hopefully before they get, get to the point of not being in school, identifying kids who might be at risk and then um, bringing in community resources to help mitigate those risk factors. And that's a big part of, of uh, mental health first aid. Absolutely. Are the resources, the know the resources. Absolutely. And you've got your fingertips on the pulse of a lot of resources. Yes. So you work with a lot of other, other agencies to try to help the person. Yes, yeah, so um, communities and schools, we do a lot of coordination. We, we uh, at the office in Aurora, we don't have a huge number of staff members, but what we try to do is develop a lot of community partnerships so that we can um, pr bring those resources to where kids are at, which mm -hmm. is the school building, and provide those resources, connect those resources with kids in a different sort of way. Do you have an office at the schools, or is it? Um, in, we have offices in some of the schools, but um, our administrative office is a, is a separate office. Mm -hmm. We have kind of um, three main programs that we do. Um, one is called our Daytime Services Program, and in that program we get referrals from the, the schools. They identify kids who may need some additional like counseling or mental health resources. Mm -hmm. um, those, are, those are needs that beyond what um, school personnel can provide. You said like nationally, how many, I mean all across the states or just like local? All across the states there wow. are CIS programs. Do you know how the program started? I mean who initiated it? Or? Um, the founder of the program is, his name is Bill Milliken um, and it's, CIS has in, uh, evolved over the last like 25 or 30 years um, but it's always been about helping kids stay in school and the importance of providing that education. Where did the funds come from? Um, our funding sources, we have um, grants uh, from, that come from the Department of Education. Some of them, they're called 21st Century Grants, and those provide after-school programs. So we have a number of after-school programs that mm -hmm. we coordinate. Um, we also get a significant amount of funding from the city of Aurora. Mm -hmm. They um, actually I, I, uh, use, I think, some of the riverboat uh, uh -huh. funding that they have um, to uh, provide uh, those resources for us so that we can coordinate a bunch of these resources and also then work with a number of the other community agencies so they can provide their services in, in a different venue. Instead of just expecting that families are going to come to them and utilize right. their resources, we're trying to be that link, that liaison, so that counselors from a, a number of community agencies can come to the schools and actually provide counseling services to the kids in the school buildings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you work so. with the resource officers, you work with the different uh, social workers within the schools, yes, the we counselors? Work, yes, we work a lot with the school social workers, the guidance counselors, the deans, mm -hmm. um, sometimes the school resource officers, um, but the referrals all come from the school to us so they're saying hey here's a kid who really has something going on needs some additional help that you know we j we just can't provide because right, we have so right. many other responsibilities in the building um, and so we kind of assess the kid and and say yeah we think the student would benefit from working with someone from this agency right uh, and so um, then we also take care of all the coordination part of it about making sure that when that counselor comes in there's a room and a space for them to provide that counseling service does this go from kindergarten to Yes, High we school, do, college? Yeah, uh, through, we work with the public schools in Aurora, so kindergarten through 12th grade in the public schools. Okay, very interesting. So 
your more majority of time then is in high schools or middle schools? Primarily middle and high schools. We do have some programming in the a in the elementary schools. That tends to be the after school programs that we uh, coordinate and facilitate. Right. And when we're looking at uh, mental health first aid, now we have a youth mental health first aid. Yes. And we'll be able to uh, maybe plug that into for the teachers and, and give a little bit more. And uh, with the youth mental health first aid, we're, we're not talking about teaching youth. We're talking about teaching people that work with the youth. Yes. So this would be perfect for, in fact, we had a class not yes. too long ago with you. Yes. So one of the things, um, we're fortunate in Aurora to have Aurora University that has a social mm -hmm. work program. And so we always have social work interns every year that work with CIS. Right. And they help us you know, work with, uh, provide counseling to larger numbers of students than we would be otherwise. And so every year we always like to provide them with the mental health first aid training. Right. It's a great starter kind of yeah. training yeah. for them in terms of And they of were the hungry skills. for it. They really liked yes. it. They enjoyed it. Because they, yes. they had some ideas of what to do with it because they've been dealing with it as an intern yes. and it made more sense to them. Right. It seemed like. So we've done mental health first aid for a num for a couple of years I think mm -hmm. but this was the first year we were able to provide the youth mental health right. first aid right. which was great because it really then that's who they're going to be working with and it really gets them thinking about the kind of situations or discussions conversations that they might be having with young right. people. Exactly. With your jurisdiction of your area now, I was in the Kendall County Schools and Yorkville Schools, mm -hmm. and I've never heard of, of CIS. So I, I was wondering, with is it just King County or Aurora School District only? Is that what you're... Yes, it's just Aurora. Actually, um, Communities and Schools, this is sort of our 20th anniversary. Mm -hmm. um, and so, 93, 94, there were... It was actually something that came out of um, some meetings that school people were having with police, uh, the police department right. and other community people. Um, and at that time, we had a much more serious gang problem in Aurora, and just and really looking at... not that it's not there, it's still there, but it was a little bit higher. And the violence level right, was a lot right. more serious then. So, um, you know, what could we do to kind of network mm -hmm. better and bring community resources mm -hmm. together? And a number of people had learned about communities and schools, uh -huh. heard about it in other areas, and said, hey, this sounds like a good idea. What's the possibility of bringing that to how Aurora? How can we fund it, bring it here? So how long has it been in Aurora? Um, it was in, CIS was incorporated in nine, 1994. So we really okay. are like 20 years old. And right, you did say that, yeah. We've right. kind of expanded. Um, we started out working in like one or two schools. Mm -hmm. And what it's happens expanded. is one another school would hear about it and be like hey those are some awesome services we'd like to have that in our building right. and so we've just kind of figured out how to grow it so now we provide those services to all Aurora public schools which means actually four different school districts mm -hmm. East Aurora School District West Aurora School District part of Indian Prairie which right, is District 204 the mm -hmm. Aurora schools and there are a few schools in the Oswego mm -hmm. school district that mm -hmm. actually are in the city limits of Aurora. Right. So you're, you're uh, going over that side too a little bit. Yes. Now, but because we get a lot of funding from the city of Aurora we have to stay Aurora based. Right. What I want to find out a little bit more is and when we come back we'll talk about this. Mm -hmm. You said that the the counselors and they have highlights of, of the, the give you the kids to look at. I, I want to find a little bit more of where that comes from. Okay. What are they looking for? Sure. So we're going to talk more about that when we come back. Come back and see us. Tú no eres un superhéroe. Visita al doctor regularmente aun cuando te sientes bien. Así, podrás seguir cuidando a los que sí te ven como un superhéroe. Para más información, visita ahrq.gov. Underneath everything we are, underneath everything we do, we are all people, connected, interdependent, United. And when we reach out a hand to one, we can influence the condition of all. That's what it means to live united. Welcome back to Mental Health First Aid. We have Denise Ellsbury here talking about the communities and schools. And it's fascinating to me, and I think it'd be very interesting for any parent to know what the resources are out there and how you can help with the child if there's problems going on. How do you know 
when you're needed. You, can, a, can a parent say, hey, I need some help, or is it mm -hmm. pretty much just school personnel? So we try to take most of our referrals directly from school personnel. So just as an aside, I would say any parent who has some concerns about Plug their child's the social behavior, worker. yes, call the school counselor, guidance counselor, um, or the school social worker and talk with, the, with that person about what your concerns are for your mm -hmm. child. If there's been something that's happened outside of school that you're concerned might be having an impact on the kid's right. success right. in school, call and talk to somebody at, at school about that. And generally, the guidance counselor or school social worker is going to be a great place for you to start. The squeaky wheel. Yes, right? absolutely. Yeah, gets absolutely. the help for it. So you were saying that the deans even get part of this. Yes, yeah, sometimes we get um, referrals or? from, so, you know, sometimes the people that do discipline mm -hmm. because some of the referrals that we get um, for kids are because they've had some behavior problems at school. Um, some of the students have been suspended on even multiple occasions right. um, or uh, have some attendance issues, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. defiance maybe in some of the classrooms or difficulty getting along with peers. Right. And so um, that's kind of one source of referrals for us. We also look to get um, referrals on students who, again, maybe there's something that's happened outside of school. Maybe there was a death loss, mm -hmm, some, mm -hmm. someone significant to right. them. Um, maybe the parents, there's been some family disruption because mm -hmm. of a divorce or separation or change in family constellation. Does the school resource officer plug into that a little bit too? Because they, um, they'll see stuff that's happening out in the street too and then come into the school and know what's happening to be right. able to... Right. In too. Sometimes they do. I, I think our involvement with the school resource officer tends to happen through to the, the school. Mm -hmm. Yes, the deans or the social workers. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and we, we're also looking for students who, that student who maybe um, generally flies under the radar in the sense that they're very quiet, they're very withdrawn, you don't see them interacting right, with right. other people. And they're not the kid that immediately comes to mm -hmm, a teacher's mm -hmm. attention because they're not causing a problem in the classroom. Right, right. But very often those are students who may be struggling with some depression, anxiety, or something else. And we want to be able to work with that student too because if we don't, mm -hmm. then you start to see um, failure to complete homework, inability mm -hmm. to complete the homework, mm -hmm. missed days of school, right. all those kinds of it's things. Just an avalanche. We have been working with Indian Prairie. Uh, uh, I think we got almost all their administrators now mm -hmm. for mental health first aid. Mm -hmm. uh, they were taking it very seriously and they want to understand it better to see the highlights, to see, okay, is this a, and not to diagnose, but to say, okay, Absolutely. is this a depression thing or anxiety thing going on so they can incorporate the help that they have the different uh, groups that can help the people Absolutely. Uh, get through this a little bit better. So we're pretty excited about that. Right. I know Oswego's been uh, looking at it. Uh, we have an uh, instructor over there, and you said West, well, West Aurora, we have Miriam. Exactly. Yeah, Miriam is one of our instructors, Wade right. Hicks, and she does a great job for us where we're right. in the West High. And we started at East High now. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, with some schools uh, teaching there. It's great. It's, it's great training for teachers because um, it just helps them, I think, see behavior mm -hmm. or at least consider a different perspective to look uh, at, at a child's behavior. That maybe it's not just that the kid is being bad right. or, or um, defiant or challenging your authority in the classroom yeah. or whatever yeah. that is maybe there really is something else going on and at least it's the pause to say right. okay let, let's consider another option of providing help or at least uh, trying to connect with that student right. like right. how do I even have a conversation with that student That's instead of thing. just like oh send them to the dean's a office. A conversation a comfortable conversation because yes. people are so uncomfortable talking about mental health issues Absolutely. they just not they don't feel right. that's personal I don't want to talk about that that's not my business you know it is and it's when, all of our right and when a teacher um, can do that for a student mm -hmm. Wow, that's, when the that's I mean, that's, if I want to call something school glue, mm -hmm. that's school glue. Because mm -hmm. I, so often when I talk to kids, well, what, you know, what classes do you like? Oh, I like this class. How come? It's teacher. not because I like the subject, it's because I like yeah. the teacher. Yeah. And it's because the teacher did something to connect with me mm -hmm. and relate to me, listen to me, knows who I am, right. something right. like that. Big time with it. Talking about relationships and bonding. How's it going with the administration? I mean, I know as a school police officer, a school liaison officer for the police department, I had dual 
administrations. I had to deal with the school and the police parallel sure. together. So you had to have the, build those relationships with both pretty strong. Yes. How's that going for you? Yes. So <laughs> we like, the, you know, that's one thing that we work really hard at with CIS yeah. is because um, we're all about partnerships. So we right. have to be in the networking business. Um, this year, there are three new superintendents in three wow. of the four Aurora school districts. So we are kind of in the process of making new connections mm -hmm. and new relationships. Mm -hmm. um, I think the better you can work with them, the better absolutely. the better quality program you can give to the kids. Well, and we have we have offices um, at East High, at West High, and at, at some of the middle schools. Uh -huh. So awesome. we're long-term guests mm -hmm. in their building. Mm -hmm. So we have to have a good relationship with the school districts because we're there right. all the time. Right. And we have people coming and going. Um, so it's, it, yeah, we have to have relationships with the people at the top, but yeah. it's important yeah. for us to have good relationships with the principals, the social workers, right. the school secretary. Yeah that often is the person that really helps us with just my, the day-to-day -day stuff like I need a room to talk to right, the student. Right. One of my uh, principals I started with, uh, Doug Trumbull, in the school, he says, Barry, I want to tell you one thing that's very, very important. You've got to learn and learn now mm -hmm. and deal with this in a good way. You've got to really buddy up to the janitors and to the secretaries. <laughs> sure. If you want success, that's what you need to Absolutely. do. That was some great advice. Yes. You know, because they are the workers. They are the the pulse of the school. Absolutely. And it's very important to have that. You know, I was thinking back when you were just talking about the relationships and stuff. I was in the schools for 14 years mm -hmm. uh, as a police officer, uh, as a school liaison officer, and I had some great relationships with some of the administrators. I, mean, I think back at the, some of the fun stuff that, you know, it, it, we enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. It was a good time. And the kids can tell that. Sure. You know, that you're happy, you're having a good time there, and you enjoy it. And, right. Uh, boy, Mike Early, he's a, a superintendent now uh, down south somewhere, but we, he's assistant principal at Yorkville at the time, and we had a riot mm -hmm. it, and helped a lot of kids during that right. time. So right. it's really important, I think. Right. They, they yeah, have that. and we, um, we always try to find those key people in the building yeah. who can really make yeah. that relationship happen. It, uh, certainly, a lot of the buildings are not set up for counseling right. space. Right, right. So we always appreciate that person in the building who can help us find that private confidential place where mm -hmm. we can have those conversations with kids that, you know, because we're setting up regular counseling sessions right. for kids and we need to have that good space. Looking at this with a daily, just your, your normal day, your average day. Mm -hmm. I hate saying normal because normal is never what's normal, right? right? So your average day. Uh, do you go to the base office and say, okay, I've got this one, I've got to see, i got this one, and they, they give you assignments? Or do you go to the schools directly and say, hey, we've got to work on these? Or is it an ongoing thing? It's, a, it's an ongoing thing. So um, I have um, three staff members who work with me in my particular program for communities and schools. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a full-time staff member at East High. I have a full-time staff member at West High. That is, has an officer, that's where that they go every day? That has an office in their, in their building, in right. those buildings. And so they work directly with the school people in, in those buildings. Mm -hmm. um, and they receive the referrals on the students okay. that are needing help. We do an assessment with the student once it, the student's referred to us, and we always have parental consent right, and right, permission right, right. to you do gotta that. You've got to go through the protocol. Absolutely. Um, but we do an assessment with that student, and then based on that assessment is when we're saying, right. hey, you know what? The, you and know, time into their uh, different programs that would help yes. and, and different resources. So the we resources work, is a key, what I want to yes. talk about next. So we work with a number of agencies right, in right. Aurora. We have a break we're going to do right now. All right. And the resources, what I want to discuss next with the, oh, you've got a lot of good resources yes. that you've worked with. So let's talk about that when we get back. And we'll see you in well, about a minute. And what'd she say? She said whatever. No, she says that all the time. What's that? Hello? I'm on the phone. Mom, I'm on the phone. Hello? I'm on the phone. Who's this? It's me. I'm on the phone. Mom. Oh, you're on the phone. <laughs> All right. Sorry. 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 Okay, anyway. Who are you talking to? Kelly? Mom. All right. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. Ready. 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 It can be a little awkward Ready. when your friend tells you he's been diagnosed with a mental illness. Ready. But what's even more awkward is Ready. if you're not there for him, 
he's less likely to recover. I'm here to help, man, whatever it takes. Welcome back to Mental Health First Aid. We're here with Communities in Schools with Denise Ellsbury talking about what she does and how she helps kids and what's, what's going on with it exactly. But we're look, looking now closer at the resources. What kind of resources do, do you have that helps you to help the child? Let's say like with chemical dependency. If it's alcohol or drugs, it's your pretty good guess that's going on, or maybe they even admitted it to you. What do you do with that? What other resources can you use? Sure. So we have um, a number of agencies, community agencies, that um, have kind of working relationships with us, and we call them. So we get a student that may have a substance use or abuse issue. Um, Were the nurses getting school nurses get involved with that too? Um, or? Not not so much from that, from that and but social worker more. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so. If we know that that's an issue with the student or maybe in the family, right. because that's part of our assessment questioning, um, we'll, we'll find that agency or that person that has some expertise in, uh, you know, maybe someone with a CADC who right. can work with students CDAC, that way. CDAC, what's that? The Chemical, Chemical and Alcohol uh, Drug Counselors. Okay, they're so certified. They're specific yes. certification for yes. that a clinician yes. type thing, but that's yes. a certification. Yes. Would they? offer to the parent so really your your person you're dealing with is the child but it can spill over into the parent or family yes. members some of our um, counselors from some of the agencies will offer have the ability to offer services in their um, offices as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. to involve the parents um, and, and if parents want that help and will utilize those mm -hmm. office appointments that's great and you we encourage offer. that um, but we're also looking at you know sometimes parents are working two or three jobs um, maybe they can't afford maybe they right. don't have transportation whatever there are many barriers to why kids Absolutely. don't get help right. and so we're trying to eliminate as many barriers as possible mm -hmm. the transportation could be a big one Absolutely. Like, like you're saying yeah, yeah. so we work with um, we work with like suicide prevention services. Mm -hmm. um, their Depression. offices are in Batavia, and so they, um, yeah, kids that have been identified as having some depression or anxiety uh, difficulties. What about like Alateen? Would that be us. something? Um, not so much, no, f for us. I mean, but that, that would, would be a counseling. referral that right. we would say, hey, here's another resource that would be available to you. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the, the, um, counselors that we work with that mm -hmm. come into the schools, mm -hmm. that, that's not one. Alateen, can you give a, a real quick, we brought it up now, what sure. it is? Sure. Uh, it's kind of uh, part of an outgrowth of Alcoholics Anonymous mm -hmm. or Al-Anon, which is a support group for family members. Al-Anon is like the adult support group for family members, and is Alateen Alan? Okay. is the support group for uh, teens who might have a parent or a family member who has a substance abuse right. problem. Right, they try to get their head on straight of what's yes. going on, it's not their fault, Absolutely. and they try to live with it in a, a better Absolutely. way. So it's just a, that's a distant, uh, second removed one that you would, they, somebody else would, yes. would give them that. Yeah, uh, we, we try to provide other community resources in addition to the ones that come into the buildings, mm -hmm. uh, the counselors that work with, mm -hmm. with the kids. So we mentioned uh, drugs, alcohol, uh, I think alcohol, what do you, I'm just going to get a, a, a guess, I want to hear from you, just mm -hmm. not, you know, for sure or whatever, I'll study on this. What do you think the, the biggest abused drug is in the Aurora schools and, and your jurisdiction that you're dealing with? Honestly, I hear about marijuana the most, mm -hmm. um, but, the, but the thing that probably concerns me the most um, that I don't know that we're talking about enough is prescription drugs oh, yeah. because yeah. they're in they're in the medicine cabinet oh, yeah. they're available yeah. to the kids Absolutely. and I think that it's still something that people don't have their awareness on mm -hmm. um, yes the one that I hear kids mention the most is uh, marijuana use mm -hmm. um, but you know I mean, just the in the news when you hear about people dying lately it's prescription drug right. use right mm -hmm. you know in my uh, background and this was three years ago I've been out of it for three years now in the police department but uh, in the schools, by far, the number one drug use, by far, not even close to anything else, is alcohol. Mm -hmm. And people, they go, wait a minute, oh, that's not a drug. Yeah, that's a drug. You know, yes. that's a drug, and people don't see it as a drug. I can't tell you how many times I went to a parent, caught the child drinking or whatever, they arrested, uh, given to the parent, custody of the parent. The parent says, oh, thank God it wasn't drugs. Right. 
wrong. Yeah, hello, <laughs> McFly. In there. Yeah, that's a drug. You know, yes. we have to really look at that. But it's an acceptable drug. A parent would much rather see that, but it can be so much more damaging. Yes. And you can die from that, too. Absolutely. We have to look at that. That was part of the DARE program where we try mm -hmm. to get more uh, talk about it. So I think alcohol is probably the number one, and maybe you're. And maybe it is marijuana now, where it's picking up I so much I think it's more. probably equal. I just hear kids yeah, talk, talk about, about marijuana the than they marijuana. talk yeah. about alcohol. But if you if you explore it a little bit more, mm -hmm. you'll mm -hmm. hear you'll hear both. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about um, depression, anxiety? Yeah. So uh, that's probably a good chunk of the kids that are referred to us are kids that are experiencing some depression. Some anxiety, Do they possibly it? some self-injury. Yeah. We hear a lot of kids talking, uh, not a lot, but a significant number of kids talking about self-injury, and that's a screening question that we always have. Is we always ask the kids if they've um, been, you know, self-injuring, and because we really want to address right, that. Right. Do mm -hmm. they know that they have an anxiety problem or a depression problem? They don't even realize it. Uh, I think. You know what I mean? Yes, I think it. Um, it that often they don't. They just know something's wrong. Um, and often for kids, they don't experience the down in the dumps depression that mm -hmm. we think of as adults. Mm -hmm. They experience depression more as anger, irritability, mm -hmm. or anxiety. And yeah, so boy. I hear a lot of kids uh, talking about just that oh, everybody's getting on their nerves yeah. or they're worried about things or even students who have those sort of like angry outbursts mm -hmm. and are yelling mm -hmm. back at the teacher mm -hmm. often it's depression that's the root of that right. it's not just that they're an angry kid right. and then they got the other thing you get you have to flush out of that is the hormones uh, that's going on sure. and that trying to gain that wisdom on what their body's doing what's going they're going through at that time right you know if you're just born with all that wisdom boy life would be so much easier <laughs> you know, to, to see what's going on so with who would you refer or who would you get help with depression and anxiety so we work with suicide prevention services. You mentioned that. We mm -hmm. also have we work with Gateway Foundation. Okay. Um, in Aurora, their office has not only the substance abuse component, but also they provide they, they have a child and adolescent mm -hmm. um, counseling services, and so um, we refer to them. Um, we have another uh, agency called Taking Control that mm -hmm. provides counseling, mm -hmm. um, and um, all of them have expertise in sort of a variety right. of kind of kinds of issues. Right. Um, I know Linda Oaks takes a lot of the kids' yes. uh, in information. Yes. We're going to talk about that next with eating disorder. Mm -hmm. uh, do you see that? Um, I interesting was just doing a um, uh, an intake with a young lady on Monday and. Uh, she was talking about initially her depression and anxiety mm -hmm. that she'd been experiencing, but we always ask about sleeping and mm -hmm. eating mm -hmm. habits, and um, then it sort of she came started to the talk about her eating, and I wouldn't say she had an eating disorder yet, mm -hmm. but you could tell that there was some disordered eating right. to her, and, right. and so absolutely we want to get her hooked back up with a counselor right. so that right. she can begin to talk about those things, so hopefully we can yeah. circumvent that. Well, i got to tell you, we are so glad that you're in the schools and helping out. I'm glad that Aurora had the insight to get that hook up. And it's a great get it program. There. Yeah, and to be able to help out. I know through the schools, working through the schools, myself as a police officer, we wanted all the help we could get with mm -hmm. that. And we were part of that too, that process. Yes. So we hope you learned something with this and the parents to get, get a little empowerment to understand what's out there and the resources and to be able to uh, use those resources. We're all there in the same uh, boat to help each other out. So we'll see you next week. Thanks a lot for uh, coming today. Big talk. Big talk.